Let's discuss Phil the Attardo and his refusal to compromise in later seasons of The Sopranos. Did Phil the Attardo do 20 years in the can? It's safe to say that he did. After all, he reminded us enough. In a show where criminals are the focus, Phil is the show's antagonist, at least in the later seasons. Phil might be a brutally violent man, but one thing we can say is that he's loyal. After all, he stayed silent to protect the likes of Rusty Milio. And let's not forget that he compromised. He wanted Manicotti in prison, but ate grilled cheese off the radiator instead. He could have requested Rosalie April bring him some manicot. Remember that time in the restaurant when patrons were looking over at her table? She called them nosy and yelled at them to eat their manicot. Phil's deprivation of the cuisine would prompt him to exclaim, Yes, ma'am. Phil wanted a woman in the can, but compromised. He had a good time with tissue. Seeing as Tony told Melfi that you get a pass for having sex with men in the can, because what are you going to do? There's no women there. Maybe Phil got it on with fellow inmates instead. I'm kind of joking here, and perhaps I should stop before I get the Eugene Pontecorvo treatment for making a gay joke. Phil felt mistreated by his boss, Johnny Sack, who sided with Tony over giving 40 grand to Tony's father's former mistress. Tony's a kid with a lot of balls, making a demand like that. Phil is reluctant to pay, and Tony chases him down in his Escalade, causing Phil to get in an accident and have to spend some time wearing a neck brace. To make matters worse, his car seat isn't sitting at 12 o'clock, and he has to deal with Joey's annoying Stevie Wonder eyes. Did Phil do 20 years just to be treated like this? Whatever happened to Phil's brother Billy? I'll tell you what happened there. That cocksucker Tony Blundetto shot the kid without any provocation. Phil held his dying brother in his arms and let it known that Billy couldn't even say his last words. Phil never gets to take care of Tony B himself because Tony S blows his cousin away on the porch, sparing him from Phil. Phil had to deal with his cousin's husband being found out to be a fanook. Tony was slow to deal with this, so Phil took matters into his own hands. This was the start of Phil's rapidly increasing bold behavior. Phil's brother's death was the last straw for him. He essentially stopped giving a f about compromising. This didn't happen immediately after Billy's death. It happened at the celebration of what would have been Billy Leotardo's 47th birthday. Phil says that Leonardo was their original surname, but the Metagons misspelled their proud Italian name giving them a surname that sounds like a ballet costume. The thing is, in ballet, you wear tutus, but it doesn't make a difference. Why would the authorities change his family name at Ellis Island? Because they're stupid, that's why. And jealous. Phil sits at the bar and eyes the photos of past leadership. Carmine Sr., Johnny Sack, and his brother Billy. He seems wounded resigned to the perceived fact of never being respected. Compromise is over for him. He laments that his legacy so far has been that of a pushover. No more, Butchie, he says. No more of this. Phil wants 25% of the money made off of asbestos removal. Tony makes a reasonable counter, offering 15% and forgiving what Phil owes him on the vitamin truck. Phil tells him it's not an offer, it's his position, which he adamantly maintains, 25%. No compromise, no leeways, just stupid fucking Charles Schwab jokes. But hold on, Phil started making bold moves in Tony's direction before Billy Leotardo's birthday. He killed Vito, Tony's top-earning captain. It would be more accurate to say that his brother's death made Phil more rigid, cold, and calculating. He partially blames Tony for his brother's death, and Billy's birthday brought back some of the hurt he was feeling. The birthday party reminded him to stay on track and not care what people think. 
Bill's heart attack may have served as a reminder of his mortality and drove him to start doing things the way he thought he always should have. Like he tells Butchie, I like to do it over, boy, let me tell you. I f***ing compromised everything. Notice that Phil has a drink of hard liquor in his hand. The audience isn't sure just how much he had to drink before that, but we do know that Phil said similarly dark things in another scene where alcohol is involved. At a restaurant before Vito's death, Phil refers to Vito as a cornholing sucker and says he deserves to die. Tony tells Carmela that La Cosa Nostra has codes that prevent you from hurting family members of other mafia families. I don't think Phil would like what I just did there. Like he said about Johnny Sack, you never admit the existence of this thing. Codes or not, Phil showed disregard for codes when he grabbed Christopher's mother. It seems he was looking to kill one of Tony's soldiers as revenge for his brother, but he calls Christopher's mother a and threatens to ram a discman in her box. Phil is in a blind rage, and the fella he's with reminds him that it's the guy's mother, Phil. It's the guy's mother. Little Carmine mediates a sit-down with the Jersey and New York families, both Tony and Phil nodding to put the past behind them. So the reconciliation is going very well. That is, until Little Carmine starts unnecessarily listing things to leave in the past. He brings up Vito and the no-show jobs. Tony and Phil nod in approval. But then brings up Billy Leotardo. Your brother Billy, whatever happened there. What the f***, Carmine? Why would you possibly bring that up? Phil gets up and leaves with his guys after calling Tony a piece of shit and calling little Carmine a sucker. This meeting kept Phil on track to being done with compromise. Can we really blame Phil for being done with compromise? The man did his fair share of compromise in the can, 20 years in the can. Then he compromises when he gets out of the can. He pays Tony 40 grand for his father's mistress and Tony runs him off the road for ducking him. Remember that this woman insulted Tony's mother in front of him. But to be fair, this happened after Tony gave her the 40 grand. Phil held his brother Billy as he dies and was not able to say his last words. Did I mention Phil did 20 f***ing years? Phil refers to Billy as a kid, being only 46 when Tony B killed him. Then Phil refers to himself as an old man. This realization and his mistreatment as a stand-up guy may have prompted him to finally take action. He takes action by standing up to Tony during an asbestos disagreement. Tony takes Butchie and Coco off of his payroll for another construction project. Coco enacts revenge by harassing Tony's daughter, and Tony curb stops him when he finds out. Tony nearly killed Coco, but held himself back. Coco is one of Phil's guys. Little Carmine visits Tony at the Bing and tells him that Phil shut down a construction project and started a plumbing strike over this alteration Tony had with Coco. Tony is frustrated, but agrees to meet with Phil with a peace offering of drills. Phil knew they were coming because Little Carmine brokered the thing, but Phil changed his mind. Did Butchie talk Phil out of it? Or maybe Phil reminded himself that the compromise was over. We can barely see Phil. He's up in his tower like a king, looking down on the peasants. Like Butchie says, Phil doesn't want their f***ing drills. He calls Tony a sucker and a piece of shit and says to go back to New Jersey. It doesn't end there for Phil. He tells those who are not upper management to go take a walk and begins discussing taking out the glorified crew with his key guys. Compromise was indeed over. Even in the middle of the war, Uncle Philly, Uncle Philly my ass, said we can't go back now, when Butchie hinted at reaching out. Was Phil right to be done with compromise? He could have still compromised and avoided a war, and at the same time, not been a pushover. He could have built a good legacy, Phil may have been more understanding if he knew what Coco did to Meadow. Phil may have known, but the show does not mention that. Phil's heart attack could have made him more aware of his mortality and pushed him to take advantage of the time he had left. Yes, while in the hospital, 
he still shook Tony's hand in friendship, and they seemed to reach an understanding about life, acknowledging that there's plenty of money to go around for both families without problems. But she never seemed to like Tony, even disrespecting him at the hospital. Maybe he put terrible ideas in Phil's mind. After all, who wants a war? If you are enjoying this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video because that motivates me to make more content like this. My name is Justin Tobin, and thank you for watching.